Over the last week, states have been winning the freedom to marry at such a fast pace that it's hard to keep up. AFER has conclusively won its marriage case. Cases in four other states have ended in victory. The Ninth Circuit has expanded marriage in several more states. It's been a pretty terrible week for the National Organization for Marriage, but a pretty great one for freedom, liberty, and equality. For the American Foundation for Equal Rights, I'm Matt Baum, and welcome to Marriage News Watch for October 13th, 2014. As the dust settles from last week's victories, marriage has now started in a whole bunch of states and is likely to start in several more in the next few days. So let's take a look at what's happened so far and what's likely to come next. First, the Supreme Court allowed marriage to start in five states, Virginia, Oklahoma, Wisconsin, Indiana, and Utah. Marriage is now legal in those states for good, with no chance of going away. That amounts to 27 million more Americans living in states with marriage equality, the largest increase since 38 million Californians gained the freedom to marry when A for won its case against Prop 8. But it doesn't stop there. We're going to start seeing marriages in neighboring states as well. That's because the rulings that the Supreme Court allowed to stand were at the circuit court level, which covers multiple states. And in fact, that's already begun, with marriage starting last week in Colorado, North Carolina, and West Virginia. Officials in Kansas have also ordered a start to marriages, but other officials have ordered a stop to marriages. The expansion of marriage equality is now happening so fast that by the time you watch this video, more states may have already gained the freedom to marry. As of this recording, marriage could come any day now to Wyoming and South Carolina, or it might have come already in the time it took me to shoot and upload this video. That's how fast we're winning. There's also the possibility that it might take several more months to get the freedom to marry in some of those states. It all depends on whether state officials are ready to end their defense of their marriage bans or whether they want to pointlessly drag out the litigation. Last week's other major news was a big victory in the Ninth Circuit, which overturned marriage bans in Nevada and Idaho. Marriage has now begun in Nevada, and we're just waiting for a few details to get ironed out in Idaho before marriages can start. The ruling also applies to cases in Alaska, Arizona, and Montana, so we could see marriage start soon in those states as well, if it hasn't already by the time you watch this. So as of this recording, 29 states now have the freedom to marry. That accounts for nearly 200 million Americans, or well over half the country's population. So what happens next? Well, there are still dozens of cases still working their way through the courts. It now seems as though the Supreme Court won't issue a sweeping national decision unless one of the federal cases results in a marriage ban being upheld. That could happen literally any day now, or it might not happen for several months, or a year, or it might never happen. The next few steps depend entirely on the cases in the remaining states. So that means that the work of attorneys, plaintiff couples, and our allies in public office across the country will continue. And it means that all of us need to keep having conversations with family, friends, coworkers, and neighbors about why equality is so important. It's taken decades of work by millions of people to get to this point, and now we've nearly won. For the American Foundation for Equal Rights, I'm Matt Baum. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.